Hey, welcome to Graphopiles Delta GPTV. I'm Brad. We're back from Baltimore Comic Con, which was this past weekend. Uh, it's a bit, it was an interesting convention. Like Baltimore, to me, is one of my favorites of the year. Uh, not too far away, about an hour drive for me, uh, if that. Um, and it's such a great convention. It's one that has massively high, uh, well-known talent. Uh, Chris Claremont was one of the top people, you know, the big people this year. Uh, Howard Shake and Brian Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis, uh, Mark Wade. Klaus Jansen, it's just an awesome, awesome show. You tend to get uh, some pretty big publishers there. Um, I think Ahoy was there. Uh, Paper Cuts, Mad Cave, uh, they were there. Um, you know, it's 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 a great show. It really is a great show. Uh, this year was a, is an interesting year. You know, talking to a lot of the the other publishers or people at the booths, uh, they all felt that the the tens felt like a little bit down. That it was a little sparse. And I gotta admit, I. I wasn't there Friday, but I was there Saturday, and it did feel a little, um, a little empty uh, from usual, uh, which you know it was, it was kind of weird. But it was also a very weird year in that the convention sometimes happens around now. It's usually later in the year, um, but it also was competing against Small Press Expo, which is only it was only a half an hour away. And while the audiences might be a little bit different, it's two big comic book conventions in. Maryland going on in the same weekend. Um, they didn't work together. They, they probably could have done some really cool synergy and, and, and done some stuff together. Uh, but there are two separate shows, and I'm, I'm wondering how much that might have impacted the two of them. Um, the other thing I noticed is there didn't seem to be quite as much cosplay. And the celebrities, I mean, to me, really cool celebrities, but there's usually a, a little bit higher level, uh, a little bit more, not higher level, more celebrities there, uh, which might have been also part of the draw, like the lack of the draw as well from... You know what I saw, what or not it actually was lower intense. I have no idea, but this is just the general vibes I got. Um, but overall, I mean, it is an, if you've never been, it really is a great show. It's one where you can go and meet some amazing creators, um, you know, and, and get in line, talk to them, and it's it's not a like. It's it's not just kind of it's not difficult like to do it like some other shows. Um, San Diego can be really really difficult to get some you know, autographs and, and meet some of these creators is an example. Uh, New York similar with that. Like, this is one where it's some of those big names, except you can, you know, often just wait in a line uh, not that long or just walk up directly to their table and chat with them. Um, the, the big draws, consistently, at least when I saw, uh, Chris Claremont had a massive line, Brian Michael Bendis had a massive line, Scott Snyder had a massive line. Um, everyone else, I think, seemed, seemed to be pretty steady. Um, you know, people pretty going up pretty regularly. Uh, so overall, it was a very, it was an interesting convention. Like, I, I, I always love going. I will support it to death. Um, but it was, it was definitely seemed, it was an off year. And I also got to admit, like, I, you know, I haven't been to conventions. It's been four years, roughly, since I've been to conventions. San Diego was my first this year, and then Otakon, then Baltimore, this is SPX the same weekend. Uh, so I'm getting back into the groove of things as well. I admit I'm still a little, uh, little shell-shocked, uh, PTSD, overwhelmed, whatever you want to call it. Um... So, you know, I, I still need to get into a group of things uh, myself. So uh, that could have been part of it as well. But even with that, walked away with a lot of cool stuff. There's going to be a, so much going on here. Some of it uh, is a reflection of possibly where maybe Baltimore is going. Uh, as I said, there, there was a bunch of publishers and a lot of creators. Um, first, I want to show off the, the, the book. Mm, the graphic progeny, progeny herself picked up. She wanted Strawberry Shortcake. And um, we, got, yeah, we, got, we got a cool little autograph. Um, so we'll see if we can get a review of this from her. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. I, I, I like, I remember Strawberry Shortcake cartoon, but it eh, wasn't really my thing growing up. Uh, as I said, uh, Mad Cave, Paper Cuts, uh, and Maverick were there. They had a nice large booth and they helped us out with three really cool books. Uh, Jerry Whitley, friend of the site, I'm really excited about this. School for uh, Extraterrestrial Girls, Girl Out Fire, this is volume one. Uh, volume 2 comes out, I believe, in November, so, you know, I want to get pumped. I need to get ready. We need, we're going to have we'll go do interviews with Jeremy about Volume 2. I need to be able to read Volume 1. Uh, this is a recent release, so I'm, I'm really excited to check this out. Art, uh, Balthazar, uh, Yags, the Cranobi Tales. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of uh, kids' coverage here, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I love uh, art stuff, so to be able to see this, I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, and also... Little little uh, drawing and autograph on that as well. So cool. Uh, and this one, I'm actually really. It's gonna be funny. Don't shoot the message around this one. 
Uh, well, I while I know Asterix, I have never read an Asterix comic. Uh, I know of the characters. I know kind of the general story. Uh, I have never have never read any of their stuff. So, uh, Paper Cuts, Maverick, uh, uh, Bad Cave hooked up, and I'm gonna be able to explore this for the first time. I'm really excited about this uh, to see what it's all about. I know this is classic, classic comics. But it's classics I haven't read, so really pumped about that. Um, this is interesting. This is going to be kind of an interesting transition. And hopefully you see where I'm going with it. Uh, Stranger Comics, they are usually, I believe, at Baltimore. Uh, they helped us uh, out with some new comics. We've got Niobe and Dura. And then Assessa. Assess, um, really excited about this. I've read some Stranger Comics stuff. Um, I'm really excited to, to dive in more and learning about the worlds uh, and reading more of their stuff. But here's actually what I thought was really, really fascinating and interesting. Uh, the, the initial pitch we were talking about when I, when I went to the booth and to check it out was this Pathfinder Niobe, uh, Niobe um, book. So they're, they're doing materials for Paizo's Pathfinder. Um, I think that's brilliant. Really cool, really awesome. I'm, I'm excited about this sort of stuff. And, and back, I think, of the comics, um, some of the stuff they were showing, I don't remember if it was the trays or the comics itself, but there were things where uh, they were having more material that you could get. So just to be able to see that of comics being able to have fun and branch out and use their properties for licensed, you know, open licensed um, role playing stuff is really, really cool. To be able to see um, the do extensions on Pathfinder and build and allow people to read the comics and then go out and, and play the world. That gets to me the next part of it. The thing I did notice at Baltimore is that there was a lot of games. There was a lot of board games. It seemed to be a very expanding space for them. I, I know there was some video game stuff, uh, but the board games on the floor actually stood out. Uh, there was probably about a dozen or so different booths just focused on board games, which I thought was really interesting. Um, either stuff they did themselves or they were just selling games in general. Uh, these are two different companies that I came across that I really... Um, uh, excited about. So this is a Whiskers. It's a card game. It's really cool. We met the creator. It's a game for two to six players. Uh, ages eight and up. It says 10 to 60 minutes. Uh, it's like two deck of cards. And you wind up uh, playing cards and I think try to get the, the health away from the other players. Uh, pretty basic concept, but like art looked really good. The play seemed kind of fun. Uh, and the, the creators uh, that we met, fantastic enthusiasm. Uh, so he hooked us up with this and I'm, I'm really uh, excited about that. Um, pump, pump, pump. And I forgot my die. I got a big die from uh, from a toy company. I think it's Severed. Um, giant die that looked awesome. Uh, we'll do we'll do something for the actual board game site just off of that. The other thing that uh, I picked up was Token Terror's Battle Block. Uh, so this is an interesting company called Terrible Games. They're out of uh, Maryland. They did a Kickstarter for a game that I think it was uh, it's two players and it looked interesting. I, I wouldn't call it chess, but like had that vibe of, you know, moving little figures around uh, a grid. Um, the other thing that's really neat is they created these figures so you can also use them as tokens for things like Magic the Gathering and um, and D&D &D or whatever you want to use it. But what's really smart is they took their two-player two game, I think it was two, maybe two to six players or something like that, um, they took that game and then split it out with the same figures into a whole bunch of single-player games. So I think there's like four or six uh, single-player uh, games of this, like, battle block, they call it, the Token Terrors Battle Block. One, packaging's really, really, really cool. We're going to do an unboxing of this and then dive in and actually play this. Um, and I, I just really like this. I think it's just a beautiful box. It's a solo mini game, one of six, um, so we had to pick it up. I, I think it's really, really a brilliant idea. The packaging's amazing. The boxing was awesome. Um, so this is the cool stuff I want to see. So I'm wondering if Baltimore might start going into the game's uh, end of things a little bit. They uh, There's definitely a lot of opportunity there, and I think something that, that could go over really well. It's a huge space, um, and I think there's a massive uh, opening for that. I'd say, you know, while there's a lot of great game conventions in the D.C., Baltimore area, there are not many casual. Uh, so that's the, the wrap-up of Baltimore. We're going to go dive into every all of this himself, and, uh, of course, cover SPX uh, as well about that. Uh, so stay tuned for a lot more coverage and check out Baltimore Comic Con in 2024. If you want the latest comic news, check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. Until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky.
Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.